okay so right so good day class so today we're going to have a short lecture on the design process through the lens of design thinking okay. so i think you could imagine class that a lot of uh, companies nowadays a lot, a lot of institutions they're now adopting the design thinking process in solving problems so you're quite fortunate that in architecture design thinking is uh, it's like uh, uh, breathing air because when you design class um, in architecture the, when you design in architecture you always think about the client you always think about the needs of the users uh, using in the lens of uh, the anthropometric and ergonometric considerations okay. so design thinking class is a is a process or mindset really in, uh, in solving problems so you are still in your uh, second year um be still in design three and then there's still design four to ten and i hope that in the in each stage of the design subject that you're going to take that you're going to learn the principles of design thinking along the way i mean well, i hope that you could already master design thinking when you graduate because being an architect class it's about uh, solving problems through design okay. so what we're going to discuss now is how you're going to attack the problem because by next week I'm, I'll be giving you your first uh, play for the midterms okay. so what you're going the skill that you're going to need in order to solve uh, the problem that uh, I'm going to give the design problem I'm going to give will involve a lot of design thinking skills. Okay, so it's not just about drawing or drafting. It's about solving uh, uh, problems and then making uh, plans, architectural plans that are very logical when you think about it. Okay. So if you're going to attack a design problem, step one would be to define the problem okay so you have to understand and do research class on the type of uh, building or structure that you'll be designing for example if i'm going to ask you to design a subdivision okay so when you design a subdivision class first things first is to research the minimum uh, requirements as per the codes so what are the codes involved when you design a subdivision so you have to look into it you have to look into the nbc the national building code you have to look into the hlurb guidelines you have to look into the uh, some other laws as well which govern uh, the design of subdivisions okay. defining the problem class also means listing down the spaces for example, if you're going to design a hospital, you have to be able to design the building by listing down what are the major spaces of the hospital. Okay? So you have to design the major departments and you have to determine the relationships between the large, uh, the different large departments and then the spaces uh, under each major department so they all have interrelationships so the first thing uh, this is one of the first things i'm going to do you have to define so define the spaces what is the emergency department for for example so what it's what is uh, the purpose of it so that's part of the design process okay for example if you're going to design a residential building you have to define what the needs of the users are how many bedrooms does the uh, couple need how many children do they have um, 
what are their backgrounds. Okay? So those are the things that you must understand in order to present a solution. Okay? So the solution that you're going to present class, uh, it's going to be varied. It's going to depend on the situational context, but the solution that you must give must never violate the minimum standard set by law. Okay. So the minimum is there. It's the standard. Your role as the architect is to organize the thoughts of the client so that you, com you, um, you comply with the code as well as present something that is creative. Okay. Then... Step two is collecting information. I think that's uh, what I've also said. Collecting information. When you collect information class, you also, you collect information about the particular site. Okay? So you must determine where the prevailing winds are. What's the shape of the lot? What's the contour? What are the existing uh, flora and fauna? How far is the property from the nearest uh, establishments like malls, hospitals, etc. Okay. That's if you are designing uh, something bigger and much more complex than a residential building. But if you're designing a residential building, you collect information on the family members. You collect, you collect information on the hobbies of the wife and the husband as well as the children as well so that when you present your design you're going to present a customized solution for them okay. so what do they want do they want a pool um, or their house how many bedrooms do they need okay. what color do they like what design direction do they want and how many cars they have so those are the things that you must ask your client. So basically, when you in step two, collecting information is like interviewing your client. What are their needs? But in the context of uh, in the context of our plates, most of the information it's already written there. All you have to do is synthesize them and do your research. Okay. Then when you do your research class, always refer to uh, different books and standards such as time savers the national building code etc so these are the basic okay. so information is really important because i think right now we are in the informi age of information information is readily available at the tip of our fingertips through the internet but it is also important class that the information that you collect is also relevant to the project that you are doing okay now let's go back so step one you define the problem what the problem is uh, step two you collect information when when you go into step three that's where you brainstorm and analyze ideas okay so in brainstorming class as architecture students i think that tool that would be most useful for you would be doing the bubble diagrams. Okay? So when you make a bubble diagram class, it does not mean that in your first try that it's going to be the final and correct idea. I recommend that you do a lot of uh, bubble diagrams and then synthesize the process so that you'll be able to get the best solution that you are looking for. So brainstorming it's really important in design. So when when you work in a firm, unlike when you're still studying, when you solve problems, you're going to work with other architects and professionals as well. So they'll be included in the brainstorming process and in the analysis and uh, the analysis of the different ideas. Okay, I think this process is called ideation. So you don't have to limit yourselves on the ideas that you're going to generate. 
So just generate ideas later on, then later on organize them. Then and look into um, the best ideas that you generated. So the best ideas that you're going to generate, um, you're going to develop it even more. Now, after that class, you're going to move into step four, which is development. So develop the solutions or build a model. So this is the stage wherein you're going to transform your ideas in the bubble diagrams into something that is more scaled or the preliminary plan of the building or the design that you're working into okay so at this stage you have already filtered the ideas that you're going to use okay from the hundreds of ideas that you generated in step three in step four you're going to turn that into a preliminary design so in architecture class preliminary design means that it's already scaled so you have a general idea as to the sizes of the rooms, okay? But it does not necessarily mean that you, got, you should already place the windows in the doors, okay? Because at this stage, you're still looking into developing a solution, okay? It's not here, it's to build a model. Because in some cases, class, um, building a model could help you visualize the structure in three dimensions okay. um, last week I told you that when you design something you have to apply the principles in architectural design theories okay, such as uh, repetition symmetry asymmetry etc so there are those different uh, principles you have to apply them so in architecture, when you're already developing the solution, first in the planning process, you should have a preliminary design. Then for the exterior, at least you have a general idea to the massing, to the massing of the structure. Okay? Since you're in the uh, in the business of architecture or and design, I think you must design something uh, that is uh, quite sound. Um, in terms of functionality, in terms of aesthetics, okay. you'll find you'll be able to slowly gain an idea at step four when you are developing the solution or building the model. Okay. So this is a design class, design thinking class is a is a process. Okay. So when you follow this process there's a chance that you'll get the best solution. Because in architectural design, there are many solutions. Okay. The problem is, how will you get the best solution? Okay. So you follow the design process. If you wish to get the best design solution for the given problem. Then, step five is presenting your ideas to others for feedback okay so in a setup of a firm class after you develop your um, preliminary uh, plans or your uh, preliminary model and you're going to present it to your colleagues for you're going to present them to your colleagues for feedback so feedback class is really important whether it's positive or negative because it's going to help you improve your design okay when you um, already do your uh, preliminary uh, plans and ideas if you're a practicing architect and you present them to your client you should present them to your client to get feedback okay so that the feedback that they're going you're going to give will be used to further enhance what you are working on Okay, so when you present your ideas class and you hear negative feedback, you shouldn't feel discouraged about it. 
because it's part of the design process and it's really part of the profession of architecture. Okay, so you should learn how to accept criticisms and you should learn to look into the positive side of things because in criticisms, you can get a lot of ideas to improve. Okay, you should be thankful for people who criticize your design genuinely. Uh, even right now, you are a student, you are a student level because it's important to develop your design skills. Then, step six, step six class is like what I've said. It's uh, the, the the feedback that you're going to get. You're going to use that to further improve your design. Okay, so again, like what I've said uh, in the design process. In the lens of design thinking, it's like a repetition. So when you improve your uh, design, then you still feel that there's something still missing about it. You redefine the problem again. Then you go back the process. So it's like a loop. Okay, like like what uh, uh, what you see here in the diagram. Okay, so these steps class it doesn't mean that you're already at step six and it's already finished. If you still feel, you have a gut feel that you still need to improve your design, then you go back to step one, which is defining the problem. Okay? Define, collect, brainstorm, develop, get feedback, and improve your design. So in the student level class, I think it, it's, uh, it's good if you gain feedback also from your classmates. You ask them from your, uh, for feedback regarding your design. And maybe you can gain something uh, out of your ideas. Or you present them to your your parents, your siblings, show your design, what they think about it. Okay. Because when you solve a problem class, you have to look at it through multiple perspectives okay, to gain the best design solution. Okay. So before we end our lecture, let's look into a quote by... Albert Einstein, which is creativity is intelligence having fun. Okay, so you're lucky to be studying architecture because architecture is creative engineering. Okay, so when you design class, it's important that you have fun in what you are doing. You should enjoy it. Okay, so don't look at designing and architecture as something like a, a job that you must do. Look into it like you're playing. Okay? So when you design a building or a structure, you should enjoy the process. You should enjoy looking for solutions. Okay? So I'll end our lecture with that quote. So if you have any further questions or uh, inquiries, you can ask me anytime and then I'll, uh, I'll always respond. Okay? So I hope that you're all doing well. Stay safe. Then I'll be giving our first activity uh, for our subject this week. And next week, we'll be giving you your first plate for the semester. Okay, so good luck, guys. I hope that you will enjoy your journey in architecture.